welcome to the part 4 of our VMware series. Today I would like to actually go and fix a couple of typos I've had in the first three videos. The first one is right here where we have the default gateway. I kept on always looking at it and never seeing that I put 17216 instead of 17217. So we will fix that. We haven't actually made a mistake of using 17216 as a gateway anywhere else and we would have probably noticed because things wouldn't work. But it was really bugging me when I was editing the videos and that typo is now finally gone. So if any of you are OCD, you're welcome. Now the other one was I actually typed in the address of our domain controller dco1.sylphonpath.com incorrectly into the NTP settings of the vCenter server that we deployed in the previous video. And it still continued and it did fine because vCenter deployment won't fail if NTP server cannot be reached. However, it is something we want to fix because having time syncing properly in your production environment is very important and even for this lab I would like that to actually work so let's go and fix that first we don't want to log into the vCenter itself rather we want to go to the appliance setting and that's our vCenter URL with 5480 as the port after it here you actually log in with your root username for the appliance now that we are here, this is actually a very nice little user interface for checking out if your vCenter server is working properly. It doesn't have too many options, but it at least gives you the overall health status and CPU memory and database check mark. Is it good, bad, or is it in an error state? Now, the problem we have is under time. NTP, as you can see, I fat fingered here with 172.16.1.5. Our domain controller is 172.17.1.5 and that's what we're using as our NTP server in this environment. So we want to actually go and fix that. Now that's good. While we are here, I like to set up all my systems to the same time zone. It doesn't matter if you want to go with UTC time as it is the default here or if you want to use like US Eastern or wherever you are in the world. You should set up all your systems to utilize the same time zone. So when the daylight savings time change happens and things like that, all these systems actually get the same time. Here where I'm going to edit this and choose US Eastern. One other thing a lot of people choose is America, New York. It's the same thing as US Eastern. This is just a typical time zone drop down from a Linux system but you can go and choose really whatever you want. Now the time zone is set correctly. We have fixed the typos and bugs that I am at least aware of at this point in time. I don't think there are any others because everything really works. So our gateway is 172.17. whatever third octet of our network is dot two. And the NTP is set to DC01 on the vCenter server. Now, First thing you want to do when you're deploying a vCenter server appliance outside of fixing any issues that we had is to go to the administration and actually make sure that your root password is set not to expire. Now, if your policies require you to expire passwords and change them every X number of days, you would want to actually come here and change that in accordance to those policies. But for us in the lab, we don't want 90 days from now everything to stop working and then to scratch our head for about 30 minutes to figure out that the root password has expired. And how to actually go and reset it back is not the simplest of things. So it's very useful to actually come here and set it not to expire. Now that we have done that, we can go through all these options in the vCenter server appliance management console interface. Under summary, as I mentioned, this gives you a quick overview of which version you're running. It shows you the status. And one of the most important features in this part of vCenter server where you can manage it is actually backup. This is where you can go and set up the backup of the configuration of the vCenter server itself. Backing up vCenter server can be done in many ways because it is just a virtual machine. You could use something like Veeam Backup Enterprise Edition and back it up or some other backup software. You could go and snapshot it every now and then. 
Um, there are different options. However, the only approved method by VMware is really to back up the configuration file in this way so that you can restore in the case of a disaster. And you can set this up actually to go over HTTP or HTTPS, over SSH, over an FTP or a secure FTP server, whatever your endpoint device can accept data as, this is pretty much well covered. We won't set this up right now. We don't really have anything in our lab that can accept the data in this fashion. However, I just wanted you to know that this is where this is done. And I usually, in my production, protect my machine with Veeam Backup Enterprise Edition. I also snapshot it before I do any upgrades or updates. And I also use the backup settings here in the appliance so that I can shoot the hourly config of my backups to a data repository. Just in case of an emergency, if we ever need to restore, you can take that backup file and pretty much reseed the brand new vCenter deployment right out of the backup. It's, it's very nice. So the backup is really useful. This is also where you would create a support bundle if VMware needs to help you with something and whatnot, and you can reboot and shut down the appliance itself. Here under access, we have the ability to actually go and uh, enable or disable the SSH login and the bash shell itself. When we were deploying vCenter server, we enabled it by default, but if you want to close SSH for security reasons or whatever, you can do that right here. Under networking, you can just see how the management interface of your vCenter server is performing and if there is any data traffic going on. And also you can change the settings. When we were setting up network settings in vCenter deployment part of these videos, this is where we actually went and set everything up for the networking of this machine. Under administration, you can change your password and set the root password to expire or not. Under syslog, you can actually set the vCenter server to send the logs somewhere else for storing for the longer period of time. We will actually set this up in some subsequent videos. Under CPU and memory, you can actually see the CPU and memory utilization of the vCenter server itself. And under the database, you can actually see the current status and utilization of the SQL database that is integrated into the vCenter appliance. Some time ago, like in versions four and five, and I believe maybe even six, you had to utilize Microsoft SQL Server as the backing database of your vCenter server. Now everything comes as an appliance, everything is one little nice bubble with platform services controller, vCenter server, as well as the PostgreSQL database, all integrated in one. So with this, we're actually done taking care of vCenter server appliance. Okay, so now that things are fixed, I'm going to split this series a little bit. We're going to fork videos five and six into two different paths. And then in the video seven, we will come back again to the same kind of timelines we want to continue. The reason for this is that while I was trying to film the V switch and DV switch configuration, I realized very quickly that distributed virtual switches have so much more advanced terminology that I would probably lose anybody who does not actually care about how to configure distributed virtual switches. And I didn't want that to happen because other things coming after this are much simpler and more fun, but without the networking setup already, we can't do much. So the idea is I'm going to split this series for the next two videos. The video part five is going to be how to configure V switches. And then in the video six, we're going to configure distributed virtual switches in the same way and then we will merge back for the video seven and continue from there like nothing ever happened so for the group of people who may be following this now or in the future on their own computers they can choose if they want to watch the part five or part six and then when we come back for part seven everything can continue as usual i will make sure to name all of our networks and everything the same so underneath it all when we go deploy other appliances and other virtual machines, when I choose a network, it doesn't matter which network configuration you actually went with, vSwitch or a DV switch, it will still all look the same to you. So stay tuned, those videos are coming up shortly. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know this is a little bit different from the Mac Pro and hardware reviews videos that I have done in the past, initially with this channel. 
However, the whole idea for getting this Mac Pro was really to deploy the vSphere Lab and utilize it for my work. And in this series, I would like to show people what I actually use Mac Pro for. Other videos will come shortly. I will also review my new camera, which you may or may have not noticed. I used to use Panasonic GH5. Now we are on Canon EOS R and I really love it. It is much better than GH5 for me. So I will actually review that as well. I have the unboxing video from about two, three weeks ago that I still haven't done anything with. So that's also coming up. I'm thinking about reviewing potentially the little new Mac mini that just came out. So if you're interested, do let me know in the comments and I may actually go grab one and see what the little thing is made of. For now, stay safe and take care of each other and yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.